Mississippi I'm shuffling through the Texas sand But my head's in Mississippi The blues has got a hold of me I believe I'm getting dizzy Lord, I thought I was in heaven I keep thinking about the night in Memphis I thought I was in heaven But I was stumbling through the parking lot Of an invisible 7-Eleven
speaking to all of you in Pennsylvania so much, I decided to do it again. And the media was so nice to me after. I just had to come back. I'm very excited to talk to you about my husband, Donald Trump, who will make a fantastic president of this United States of America. The country we love with all our hearts. I have known this man, Donald Trump, for 18 years. Donald is a wonderful husband, father, and grandfather. He's strong, he's determined, bold, and decisive. He's also compassionate, thoughtful, giving, and loving. Donald cares. Donald cares so deeply about this country, he could no longer see by and allow American jobs to be lost and Americans to become less and less safe. Once given the opportunity, Donald will make America great again. My husband is not a lifelong politician. He's an authentic man, a successful businessman, who is running for president, not for himself, 
but for you, the American people. <laughs> Donald and I came from very different backgrounds. I was born in a small, beautiful town in Slovenia and entered the fashion business. Donald was born in New York City, surrounded by big buildings and immersed himself early in the real estate business. As soon as we met, however, it became clear that we have something very important in common. We both treasure the freedom and democracy that America stands for. And we both treasure all honest and patriotic Americans like you. It has been over 500 days since Donald announced that he was running for president. He has loved going all over this beautiful country, talking with the American people, hearing your concerns and sharing his solutions. This is so much more than a polit political campaign. It is a movement. This movement has inspired millions and millions of people and has made us so grateful for your support. It is a movement for all of those who are left behind by broken and rigged system. It is a movement of, of those yearning for more, a movement of those working hard for a better tomorrow for themselves, their families, and their country. This is a movement which is inspiring and inclusive. There are only three days left in this election. While we hope that Donald will become the president and he works hard every day for your support, we need you, the voters, to go out, vote, and make that a reality. We also ask that you bring your family, friends, neighbors to vote for President Donald Trump. Why should you vote for Donald? Because we need a president who will keep us safe. We need a president who will secure the border. We need a president who will break up the corruption and collusion in our government. We need a president who will bring jobs back to America. We need a president who will lower taxes and re-energize the economy. We need a president who will not leave any Americans behind. We need a president who will put America first, domestically and abroad. We need a president who will deliver the change you all have been waiting for. This is your last chance, your last chance to make a real difference. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to my husband, and the future president of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Wow. So folks, I'm going to uh, see you guys in a little while, but what am I going to do? What do I have to say? I'm going to leave. Goodbye, everybody. I'm going to... Well, what a great job. What a great job. And that's five languages, right? That's uh, not easy to do. I couldn't do it. That's really amazing. Thank you, honey. And I have my boy, Eric and his great wife, Laura, who comes from this area, right? Right alongside. Huh? Oh, and we have a very, very powerful man who I hear is doing very well. Is it working out well? Come here, Governor. Come here. He's been loyal to Trump from day one. 
We need an outsider to clean up Washington, D.C. Just like we had an outsider to clean up Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the best of America. God bless you all. Thank you very much. He's a fantastic guy. He's been there from day one, too, believe me. So I just want to thank everybody for being here. It's uh, an amazing situation that we're going through. But I can tell you, we are going to win, and we're going to win big. Hillary Clinton has all of these celebrities and failed politicians out campaigning for her. And she has crowds so much smaller than ours. I just have me, but I have my family. I have my family. I've had Eric and Laura and Don, Don Jr. And Ivanka, nobody's ever heard of Ivanka. And Tiffany, every one of them. Now, Baron, someday, he's a little young. But I will tell you, I've had my family and they've been all over. And Mike Pence has been incredible too, by the way. I'll tell you, he's been incredible. In three days, we are going to win the great state of North Carolina. And we are going to win back the White House. Real change begins with immediately, immediately repealing and replacing Obamacare. It's just been announced that the residents of North Carolina are going to experience massive double-digit premium hikes. So high, and I say this to all the groups because it's all so high, it's so depressing, I don't want to tell them what it is. So I won't tell you because right now you're happy and you'd be very sad. You'd probably turn your head down and start leaving, but it's bad. In the great state of Arizona, as an example, premiums are going up more than 100 and 16 percent. 95 of 100 North Carolina counties will only have one insurer in the Obamacare exchange next year. Lots of luck with that negotiation. Premiums are surging, companies are leaving, insurers are fleeing, doctors are quitting, and deductibles are going through the roof. Yet Hillary Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare making it even more expensive, and in fact, much more expensive. I'm asking you for your vote so we can repeal and replace Obamacare and save health care, not only for North Carolina, but for the country. It's a mess. Real change also means restoring honesty to government. As you know, the FBI has reopened its criminal investigation of Hillary Clinton. They're also conducting a second criminal investigation into Hillary's pay-for-play corruption at the State Department. It has just been confirmed that the 650,000 emails they discovered, that weren't turned in, by the way, they discovered them, thank you to Mr. Anthony Weiner. Include brand new emails not previously turned over to authorities, likely including even more classified information and maybe classified at the highest, highest level. How sad. However, the reports also show that the political leadership at the Department of Justice is trying very hard, as hard as they can, to protect Hillary Clinton. Think of it. Think of it. You have a great four-star general that right now, current, a current four-star general, that right now, General Cartwright, James Cartwright, is possibly going to be serving as much as five years in jail. General Petraeus, great general, his life was destroyed. Young man took some pictures of a submarine. He's in jail now for a year. I watched his mother the other night. And Hillary Clinton's running for president, and she's done 25 times worse than any of them or all of them put together. 
John Podesta, her boss, her head, said that she has bad instincts. Pretty bad when your person, your top person working for you said you have bad instincts. That came out on WikiLeaks. Bernie Sanders would say constantly during the debates, which, by the way, she received the questions. Nobody ever says anything about it. Can you imagine if I received the questions to the debates? They would call for my immediate withdrawal. You don't even hear about it from her. You don't even hear about it, but Bernie Sanders said she has bad, bad judgment. She does. Just take a look at what she's done. Take a look at the email mess. How about if she's running the country? She can't even run an email. Hillary created an illegal email server to shield her criminal activity, and then she illegally destroyed 33,000 emails after receiving a congressional subpoena. I mean, think of that. She made 13 phones disappear, some with a hammer. She is the most corrupt person ever to seek the office of the presidency. If she were to win, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis. If she ever got into the Oval Office, Hillary and her special interests would rob this country blind. You've seen what's happened. The Clinton family have made themselves rich by being in politics. As President Harry Truman once said, you can't get rich in politics unless you're a crook, which is an interesting statement. Harry Truman. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to end government corruption and to take our country back from the special interests. And you know, I used to be on the other side of things in case you didn't know. And I led a very nice life. But I also love our country. And this was an easy decision. I went from being the ultimate insider to being an outsider like they've never seen before. We are doing so well. This is a movement like they've never, ever seen before. They've never seen anything like this before. I love this country. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear the words we all are about to see. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington and we will drain the swamp. So true. So true, an expression I've gotten to like. At the core of my contract is my plan to bring back our jobs. North Carolina has lost nearly half of its manufacturing jobs since NAFTA, a deal signed by Bill Clinton and supported by crooked Hillary Clinton. America has lost 70,000 factories since China entered the World Trade Organization, another bill and Hillary-backed disaster. We're living through the greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. Nobody has ever taken jobs from anyone like other countries have taken our jobs. Thank you. I love you, too. It's a rough guy. He's a rough-sounding guy, but I do love him. <laughs> I do love him. I love you all. I guess that's why I'm doing this. I guess, right? I guess. Pillow Techs laid off 1,125 workers and moved their jobs to Mexico and other countries. Freightliner laid off 500 workers in Mount Holly and moved their jobs to Mexico. Brunswick Corporation laid off 212 workers and moved their jobs to Mexico. Flextronics, oh, I'm not going to buy their product anymore, laid off 312 workers in Charlotte and move their jobs to Mexico, China, and various other countries. And many, many more. We could go on all day long with that. A Trump administration will stop the jobs from leaving America, and we will stop the jobs from leaving North Carolina. That I can tell you. The theft of American prosperity will end, and it will end immediately upon taking office. If a company wants to fire their workers, leave North Carolina, move to another country, 
and then ship their products back into the United States, we will make them pay a tax of 35 percent. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're not leaving. They're not going to leave. And for the ones that do, that's OK. We'll make a fortune when they sell their products into this country. But they won't be leaving North Carolina. It ends so quickly. Now, the politicians probably knew this. I'm sure you've never heard it before. Probably haven't. But you'll stop it immediately. The outflow of jobs from our country is disgraceful. It's a disgrace. A Trump administration will renegotiate NAFTA. And if we don't get the deal we want, we will terminate NAFTA and get a much better deal for our companies and our workers. We will also immediately stop the job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Hillary Clinton loved and said it's the gold standard. It is the gold standard for other countries, not for us. That'll take the rest of our jobs. As part of our plan to bring back jobs, we're going to show and create lower taxes on American business from 35 percent down to 15 percent. It'll start the engine running like you've never seen. We will massively cut taxes for the middle class. And Hillary wants to increase your taxes by a lot. So between Obamacare, which will double and double and double, and higher taxes, you're not going to be happy if you have Hillary Clinton. We will unleash the American energy. And I'll tell you, we have such power right under our feet, including shale, oil, natural gas, and clean coal. We're going to put our miners back to work. We're going to put our steel workers back to work. Our plan will end the EPA intrusion into your family farms, stop the double taxation of family farms at death. We will stop that. Farms, the father dies. They have to sell their farm to pay the taxes. That's going to end. We will cancel billions of dollars in global warming payments to the United Nations. Nobody knows where that money goes. And use that money to invest in America, including roads, ports, bridges, waterways. We'll build highways. We'll fix our existing roads. We'll fix our bridges, half of which are in horrible condition, some of which are in dangerous condition. We will rebuild our infrastructure. And we'll rebuild our inner cities. The African-American community, the Hispanic community living in the inner cities, treated so unfairly. High crime, bad education, no jobs. We will fix it. We will fix it, believe me. And we will fix it quickly. The Democrats, for 100 years, they've run the inner cities. And all they do is every four years, they come around, give me your vote, give me your vote. You give them the vote, they say, see you in four years, they do nothing. We will fix the inner cities. We'll bring back jobs, we'll bring back safety, we will bring back education. All I say is this, what the hell do you have to lose? I will fix it, give us a chance. Believe me, been very unfair, been very unfair to the African-American community, the Hispanic communities. Give us a chance, we will fix it. We will become a rich nation once again. But to be a rich nation, we must also be a safe nation. Hillary wants a 550% increase in Syrian refugees pouring into our country. Her plan will import generations of terrorism, extremism, and radicalism into your schools and into your communities all throughout. When I'm elected president, we will suspend the Syrian refugee program. And we will keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. Have no choice. We have no choice. And we all have a heart. And we'll build safe zones in Syria. And we'll get the Gulf states to pay for them because we owe $20 trillion. We don't need to pay any more. We have to fix our own country. But we'll help them. And we'll get people that, frankly, have plenty of money to pay. And they'll be happy to do it. A Trump administration will also secure and defend the borders of the United States. 
And yes, we will build a great wall. We've received the first ever endorsement issued by America's incredible people, the Border Patrol officers and ICE. Never given an endorsement before. It's just been reported that as a result of our open borders, violent cartels have spread into all 50 of our states. More than 90% of those arrested are illegal. They're here illegally. Think of it, 90% are here illegally. You ask yourself, what are we doing? What are we doing? They're killing innocent Americans, threatening, and they are just killing innocent Americans. Take a look at what's happening. Threatening schools and destroying communities. A government that will not protect its people is a government that is unworthy to lead and unworthy to serve. As Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton allowed thousands of the most dangerous and violent criminal aliens to go free because their home countries were very smart. They wouldn't take them back. We'd bring them there, they'd say, get out of here. Murderers, drug lords, gang heads. We'd bring them there, they'd say, we don't want them back. We don't want them back. Well, let me tell you something. There won't be one instance in four years or eight years where we bring them into their country that they come back into our country, that I can promise you. They came back all the time. They said, we don't want them. And she would say, oh, that's okay. Bring them back, put them right out on the streets, and you know what's happened. Hillary Clinton supports totally open borders, there goes your country, and supports sanctuary cities like in San Francisco, where Kate Steinle was murdered by an illegal immigrant, deported at least five times. Thousands of Americans would be alive today if it were not for the open border policy of Obama and Clinton. Here in North Carolina, 20-year-old Leanna Newman and her unborn child were killed by an illegal immigrant with two prior deportations. Leanna's killer had two prior DUI convictions for driving with a revoked license and a conviction for assault charges, very serious assault. And people that knew him begged to have him incarcerated or deported, but they wouldn't do it. Another amazing American who lost his life to illegal immigration was John Wilkerson whose mother I have gotten to know during the campaign. Josh, a student in high school, was murdered at the age of 17. Credible young man, great student, great person, everybody loved him. He was tortured, strangled and beaten to death by an illegal immigrant, and then his body was set on fire. Everybody said, please incarcerate this maniac. They wouldn't do it. A Trump administration will end this nightmare of violence. We will protect American lives. We will cancel all federal funding to sanctuary cities. We will stop illegal immigration, deport every last criminal alien, and dismantle every criminal gang and cartel threatening our citizens. And that'll happen very quickly. When we win, you will finally have a government on your side fighting your community and protecting your family. We will also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense sequester and rebuild our badly depleted military. We have great people. We have great, great people. North Carolina will be at the very center of this effort with new advanced fighters flying from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. We will have the newest and the best, not the old stuff that's 18 and 20 years old where they don't even make parts anymore. We will have the newest and the best. And Marine battalions at Camp Lejeune, I know Camp Lejeune, we'll, we're gonna be increasing the numbers. And did we ever need it more? Yeah, there were times when we needed it badly. 
But we're right at the top right now. We need our great military. We're going to have major new investments also made to Fort Bragg. Anybody from Fort Bragg? So we were there the other night. We had 23,000 people. It was an amazing... Was anybody there? That was an amazing evening. That was an incredible evening. We had generals. We had admirals. We had recipients of the Medal of Honor. That was an incredible evening. And some of the people who have given us the endorsement, we have over 200 admirals and generals. We have 22 Medal of Honor recipients who have totally endorsed me, and the number's increasing on a daily basis. They like our thought process. They like when we go into Mosul, that we do it quietly, that we don't announce it four months in advance. We're going into Mosul in four months. Why do they have to say that? Why do they have to say that? And you see the resistance is now very stiff. We're going in because we think ISIS's leaders are staying there and we are going to get them. Three months, we're going into Mosul. Two months, we're going in in two months. One month, one week. Well, let me tell you, they left the first time they heard it. They were gone. And it's being very, very tough. Human shields are being used. All sorts of booby traps are being set. Why can't we go with surprise, right? Remember, in, I mean, in high school, it's called the element of surprise. General Douglas MacArthur, General George Patton, can you imagine what they would be thinking if they saw this stupidity, this stupidity of our leadership? And we have a leader, all he does is campaigns for crooked, I mean, all he's doing is campaigning for crooked Hillary. That's all he wants to do. And you know, she can't get any crowds and she doesn't have what it takes to do rallies all over the place. She wants to go home and go to sleep. So she's got Biden. He challenged me. He challenged me. Oh, I'd like to take him. I'd like to take him behind the gym. Oh, oh, I dream of that. I dream. Let, let me just tell you. Hey, folks, let me just tell you. If I ever said that, if I ever said that, they thought it was so cute. Oh, wasn't it wonderful what our vice president said? If I ever said that, oh, he's a bully. He's a horrible person. He challenged our vice president to a fight. Can you imagine what a bully he is? Much smarter, much better education, much everything. I mean, give me a break. They have Biden going around. They have all these people. And then when they can't, when that doesn't work, because, you know, Obama is going, wherever I go, I see Air Force One. And who's paying for Air Force One? Yeah, as he travels to campaign. But wherever I go and I see him screaming at people that are protesters. And with me, they show the protester. With him, they just kept the camera. They didn't want to show the protester. But I'll tell you what, he should not be campaigning for Hillary Clinton. He should be in the Oval Office working on jobs, working on building up our military, working on good trade deals. And you know, the press, which is the world's most dishonest people, these people, they never show these crowds. They never show the crowds. Never, ever. They never show the crowds. But you know, the press, and I must tell you, one of the things I've learned is the press is, I mean, honestly, they're among the most dishonest people I've ever met in my life. They're bad people, they're bad people. And the other thing I've learned is how great the people of the United States are. They're incredible people. They're incredible people. But the press is very concerned because the polls are so good. By the way, the last poll, I hate to say, we're winning North Carolina. We're winning in Ohio. We're winning in New Hampshire. We're winning in Iowa. We're winning in Florida. We're winning all over the place. They're going crazy. One of the people yesterday said, oh goodness, look at this. It's supposed to be a, you know, non-biased. 
a report came in on New Hampshire where we're up. We're winning. We're winning everywhere. But a report came in in New Hampshire, says we're winning. And the person goes, oh gosh, oh look, look at this. We're winning almost everywhere, Fox. This is going to be Brexit. This is going to be special. You have to get out and vote. But this is going to be special. We're going to bring our jobs back. We're going to take care of our incredible veterans who have been mistreated so badly. We're going to build up our military. We're going to do so many things. Hillary Clinton brought death and disaster to Iraq and Syria and Libya. She empowered Iran. And she unleashed ISIS across the world by creating the vacuum. There was no ISIS when she was Secretary of State at the beginning. She unleashed ISIS. And at the debates, by the way, did I win the debate? Those debates. But I was a little concerned because she kept saying for like a week and a half, she's in debate prep. I kept saying, what am I doing? You know, I don't mind debate prep, but you're supposed to know this stuff. You're not supposed to be prepping too much. Huh? She was in debate prep every time for a week to a week and a half. And, and by the way, every single online poll said I won the debates by mass. One had 90 to 10, but that we won the debates. But she's prepping. But she wasn't really prepping. She was actually resting and sleeping, folks. This is not what you need for your president. With China ripping us off on trade, and we're going to have a great relationship with China, with Japan, with all of these countries, what they're doing to us is incredible. Incredible. Mexico at the border. Mexico with trade. We have a massive trade deficit with Mexico. Worldwide, we have almost an $800 billion trade deficit. Think of it. You say, who, who's our negotiators? We have the greatest business people in the world, the greatest negotiators in the world. We use political hacks. Hillary and our failed establishment have spent $6 trillion on wars in the Middle East that we never win. And now the Middle East is in worse shape, farly. I mean, it's not even a contest than ever before. Worse shape than ever before. They've dragged us into foreign wars that make us less safe, shipped our goods and wealth to other countries, and they left our borders wide open at home. We send our troops to foreign countries to defend their borders, but our politicians refuse to defend our borders. That will change on November 8th. A Trump administration will never, ever put the interests of a foreign country before the interests of our country. From now on, it will be America first. To all Americans, I say it's time for change. It's time for new leadership. Can you imagine four more years of Obama, meaning high taxes? Think of it. High taxes, ISIS all over the place, radical Islamic terrorists, the whole thing. She will be worse than Obama. She will be worse than Obama. Just think about what we can accomplish in the first 100 days of a Trump administration. We are going to have the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan, even bigger. And she's going to raise your taxes. We will eliminate every unnecessary job-killing regulation. Cancel every illegal Obama executive order. We will protect religious liberty. Have to do that. Rebuild our military and take great, great care of our phenomenal veterans. We will provide school choice and put an end to Common Core. We're bringing our education local. We will support the great men and women of law enforcement. We're going to save the Second Amendment, which is under siege, and appoint justices to the United States Supreme Court, who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. It's time to cut our ties with the failed politicians of the past. Hillary Clinton is a candidate of yesterday. We are the movement of the future. We are the movement of the future.
And it's such a beautiful sight. Look, I'm looking all the way over to that hangar over there. The people are lined up. That is a lot of people. Man, it's always a lot of people. All the way to the back of this. Hello, folks. It's an amazing thing. And this is taking place all over the country, no matter where we go. Whether it's a hangar, whether it's Hershey, Pennsylvania, where the most incredible crowd you've ever seen. I mean, just every day, every night, the crowds are incredible. We're fighting for every parent who lost their child to drugs and crime and gang violence. We're fighting for every community whose jobs and dreams have been ripped out and shipped to other countries. We're fighting for every American who believes government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. I'm asking you to dream big because with your vote, we are just three days away from the change you've been waiting for for your entire life. So I want to thank all of the people who supported me. I want to thank my incredible, incredible family. I want to thank your incredible governor. Get out and vote for him, folks. He's a good man and he's going to do a great job. But we are going to all get together. We're going to those polls. Together we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again, and we will make America great again. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic people. God bless you, everybody. Still want me to come with you?